All right, so what we thought about is, let's talk about roundabouts. Now, the most important thing about roundabouts is being able to recognize the roundabout and also knowing about signaling. Now, can I ask you the first question I want to ask you is, when we talk about signaling, how many directional signals are there on the, on the indicator stick? Two. No. But the, well, three if you're not indicating. Three. There are three directional signals, okay? And the reason we say that is because you've got, obviously, if it's up, if the signal is up, means you're turning right. If the signal is at zero, it means you're going straight. And if the signal is there on left, obviously it means you're going left. And it's important to realize that there are three signals. And that's important for everybody, okay? So we need to know that we've got three signals. Now when we talk about roundabouts, we basically have three types of roundabout. Categorize them into three. We have what we call mini roundabouts. Mm -hmm. We have what we call open roundabouts. And we have what we call closed roundabouts. Okay, now let's start with a mini roundabout. What defines a mini roundabout? Do you have any idea? Um. How would you know when you approach a mini roundabout? Well, it's not. It's just painted on the road, and it's just to kind okay. of give right. the impression so that. If we know, if we approach this roundabout, we, we're approaching a mini roundabout. Yeah. So there's this mini roundabout, and what you're saying to me is, we're going to see these little markings on the road, like this. We're approaching it, and there's a dot painted in the center here. Yeah? yeah. So all of that you say is mini roundabout. Okay. <laughs> now what happens if what happens if it's snowed? What happens if it's snowed? And all we can see is the junction. See it's snowed. There'll be signs as well right there. Aha. Uh -huh. So what's going to be sticking up above the snow? Because this is what we see. We're approaching the same junction, and what do we see? We see bugger all, don't we? Yeah. Because it's all snow. We're not going to see anything. So there's a sign at the roundabout, stuck up like this. There's a little sign, right? And because that's sticking up above the snow, hopefully if it isn't sticking above the snow, we're in big trouble. But if it's sticking up above the snow, it's going to be sticking out on the side of the road. When you approach the junction, when you get to the junction, it's going to be at the junction. Do you know what it looks like? It's blue and it's got the arrows. Yeah, it's a blue sign. It's a blue sign. And it's got three chasing arrows on it going around like that. And that's at the roundabout. And that's what defines a mini roundabout. So that tells you mini roundabout. At this junction, this junction is a mini roundabout. Okay? Yeah. All right. Now the question is, how do we know when we approach a normal open roundabout? What's the difference between an open roundabout and a closed roundabout? Any idea? No. <laughs> okay. Normally, an open roundabout is a roundabout where there are no changes in priority while you are on the roundabout. So in other words, the giveaway lines and or stop lines or whatever there are on the roundabout are on the approaches to the roundabout. And in the roundabout itself, in the roundabout itself, there are no lines or anything that changes the priority on the roundabout. So you could literally, if it was legal to do, go onto the roundabout and you can go around the whole day and you would have priority while you were on the roundabout. So you could just go around the roundabout. Okay, it doesn't matter of interest. There is a rule that says you're not allowed to go around the roundabout more than three times. And they did that because guys used to use them for racing. 
Okay, so what we what we know is we can go, we can physically go onto the roundabout, go around, and we'd have priority while we were on the roundabout, and there are no lines crossing, which change it. And and the reason I categorize it as an open roundabout is because it's open for you to go around. Okay, now closed roundabout means that the priority on the roundabout will be changed. Okay, so the priority on the roundabout can be changed by a giveaway line on the roundabout or a stop line with traffic lights or something. And while you're on the roundabout, you will be giving, you will be taking cognizance of changes in priority as a result of either lines, giveaway lines, stop lines, traffic lights or something else. And those are normally bigger roundabouts. So by categorizing them into open and closed, we actually, to an extent, this is sort of a medium-sized roundabout, and this is a closed roundabout. Now, we have a sign that looks like this. It's a triangle. Like it's a red triangle. This is all red. The outside is red. So and that's it. We have in the center of that, we have some black lines going around, and that is that, that sign also the same thing, three arrows going around like that. That sign tells us it's a roundabout that you're approaching. Now that means you're approaching a roundabout. Now it doesn't define the type of roundabout. It can be any type of roundabout. It can be a mini roundabout, it can be an open roundabout, it can be a closed roundabout. It just tells you you're approaching a roundabout. Okay? All right. Now, the, the question is, why do we need to define these roundabouts as separate types of roundabout? And the answer is quite simple. The reason we have to define the roundabouts as different is because that way we have different procedures on the approach to the roundabout and also a different procedure when we are in the roundabout. So we have a different thing. And there are three things we have to consider, main things, three main things we have to consider when we approach a roundabout. And that is our signaling procedure on the roundabout, in the roundabout, and out of the roundabout. So we have to look at that and we have to look at our positioning when we approach the roundabout. Where are we going to position? So let's, let's just now take these into the categories. We take the, them into the categories and we look at those in each, in each one of the countries. So let's start with a mini roundabout. Now the first thing to remember with a mini roundabout, there's only one phase of signaling, okay? That means we're only going to use our signal singularly on the mini roundabout. And the reason for that is twofold. There are two things we have to, we can only use the signal once. That is one, the first reason is the roundabout is too small. To change the signal. It's going to be too small. There's no time to change the signal while you're in the roundabout. So you're either going to use one of your three signals, either left, straight, or right. That's it. End of story. Those are the three signals when you approach a mini roundabout. The second reason that you only do your signal once, the second reason is the people on the roundabout can normally look across the roundabout and see where you're coming from. So they can see where you are coming from, therefore they know where you're going. So there's no obstruction in the center. There's no obstruction in the center, so they can see where you are coming from and know where you're going. So there's no problem with that at all. So on a mini roundabout, one phase is signaling. Now, on an open roundabout, we have two phases of signaling. Okay, And the reason for that is we need to tell people when we approach the roundabout where we are going to go onto the roundabout, which position on the roundabout we are going to take when we're going through the roundabout. And normally open roundabouts normally have are normally singular laned, double laned, and sometimes they are three laned. Mostly they are double laned open roundabouts. Most of the open roundabouts are double lane. They have two lanes in them. But they can go up to three lanes. Okay, I, have, I haven't really experienced any of four lanes, but there might be some open roundabouts that have four lanes in them or have potentially four positions you can take. 
but mostly they are singular lined, double lined, and then sometimes three lined. Okay, so what we have to do, consider when we go on to an open roundabout is one, we have to consider the first thing we have to consider when we go on to an open roundabout is we have to consider our positioning and entrance signal. The second thing we have to consider is our relative positioning on the roundabout and our signal in the roundabout. And then thirdly, we've got to know, we've got to know when to signal out, which has to be preceded by a mirror check. Okay, so, all right, so we've got, we've got three things we have to consider, all right? Now, the first thing you've always got to remember when you approach the roundabout is what signal are you going to give and where's your positioning going to be, all right? Now, the, the rules here, and let's get a new piece of paper because it's cheap. Okay, the rules here are, okay, if you're taking, so if you are taking the first exit signal left on approach keep left in the roundabout, you keep your left signal on, on, and then you signal left out of the roundabout. Okay, now this is the, what I call the prime rule. That's your prime rule. First exit is signal left, keep left, left signal out. That's always important. That's your first one. When you, if you're taking the first exit, that's what you have to do. Right, now the next rule is if your exit is less than or equal to 12 o'clock. Okay, now the question here is how do we define 12 o'clock? So let's just have a look at that so we don't get lost. Okay, so let's have a look at 12 o'clock. So when we're talking about 12 o'clock, when we go to a roundabout, the leaderboards are normally drawn so that your entry point is at the bottom of the roundabout, which is then defined as the six o'clock position. So the six o'clock position is the bottom of the roundabout. That means that directly ahead of you would be the 12 o'clock position. So that would be the 12 o'clock position, it would be directly across the roundabout to the other side. So if we say your exit is at 12 o'clock or less, it basically means that it's either that exit or any exit less than 12 o'clock. Okay? Now, your first exit could be down here or it could be up there and, that, and your next exit could be beyond 12 o'clock. But we always define our relative exit position in relation to our entry position. So you will always be entering from the bottom of the roundabout sorry, and you will you will define your position, your exit position in relation to your entry position. Okay, so let's go back to where we were here. So we said that if your exit is less than or equal to 12 o'clock then this is now the rule that is going to be applied. But you must also remember 
it is also not the first exit. Right, because the rule for first exit is the prime rule. Okay. So now let's look at this. So if we're going to that exit and we're talking about an open roundabout, you would have the situation where one, the first thing you have to consider is your entry has to be on the left with a zero signal. No signal. So you tell people you are not taking the first exit, but you are taking any exit after the first exit up to 12 o'clock. Then, so in the roundabout, keep left and also keep your zero signal on. And then number three will be signal left at the exit prior to your exit. And then uh, then you exit exit on the left with your signal. Okay, so the second rule that we've just dealt with, it says that if your exit is at less than or equal to 12 o'clock, so it's on the left hand side of the roundabout or it's directly ahead, it is also not the first exit. Then we go in with a no signal, keep to the left hand side, keep the no signal on and then left signal and the exit prior to the exit. Okay, now the last roundabout, the last uh, rule here is now if your exit is greater than 12 o'clock. So if your exit is beyond 12 o'clock or directly ahead. So if your exit is beyond 12 o'clock or directly ahead, then you go, you're going to go, number one, you're going to go, and you're going to um, signal right on approach. Keep to the right and then three, that's two. And you, you keep to the right but you also signal right. Okay, you signal right on the approach, you keep to the right and you keep your right signal on and you keep to the inside of the roundabout, going around the roundabout. And then number three is you signal left at the exit prior to your exit and you keep your left signal and you go off the roundabout. Now importantly on every single one of these situations before you put on your signal you must check your mirrors especially if you're exiting the roundabout you always want to be looking to see what's on the left hand side of you as you go out of the roundabouts. Now, our, first, our third one is the closed roundabouts. Now, closed roundabouts, mainly on closed roundabouts, we would use three phases or consider three phases of signaling. Because they, they normally have defined, uh, they normally have defined lanes. And the general rules as above do apply, the, in other words, which your sequence of, of entry. But you often, when you get to these bigger closed roundabouts, there's a lane selection that you can do. 
which will take you to your exit. But one thing you must always remember on the closed roundabouts, you should only be in the exit lane, or in other words, the outside lane. You should only be in the outside lane on the closed roundabout at the junction prior to your exit because cars often are coming across from the second lane and exiting at the junction. So if you try and go around on a closed roundabout in the outside lane, it's really, really dangerous because cars will be crossing you to use the exits which you're covering while you're driving past them. So mostly on closed roundabouts, you don't want to be in that outside, the very furthest outside lane until you actually get to the point where you want to exit the roundabout. However, when you when you're going around the roundabout, if you've missed your your exit or something like that, there's always in all the roundabouts. Rather, put on your right signal, continue around the roundabout, and take it on the next pass. Don't try and force your way out of a roundabout if there's a car on your left hand side. Now, it's extremely important in all the roundabouts that you make extensive use of your mirrors, especially in the open and closed roundabouts, because you'll be changing lanes. So in the closed roundabout, there are three phases. It's the entry signal you have to consider. Are you lane? Are you in the correct lane? On the roundabout, you might need to change lanes. Then you might need to use, use your signals. And then you would use your signals to exit as well. Again, at the exit, prior to your exit, you would be signaling left. So you would be, one, you, gotta, you have to consider your entry signal. And that, that will depend on lane specifics whether you have to cut lanes to get to the right position on the roundabout, lane specific. So you need to decide whether you need to do that. But again, have a look at how you enter and whether the lanes are marked for your exit. And two, change lanes, changing lanes on the roundabout. You might need to actually consider your using your signal as you change lanes and then number three would be again um, left signal at the exit prior to exit all right now just quick look at signs yeah How do we okay this sign here is the sign at the mini roundabout okay this sign here is the approach to roundabouts a sign that one there that is when you approach a roundabout, you get that one, okay? And then when you get to an open roundabout at the entry point, you will have that sign telling you you have to go left plus the chevron. These two signs, that sign is normally on top and the chevron is below. And we'll put in some examples and we'll put in some examples here, photographs of those signs. Okay, and that tells you that you're on an open roundabout. And most and a lot of the closed roundabouts also have this on the approach so that you can know you're going on to a roundabout. Now, okay, so let's just look at priorities. Who has priority? Okay, so what we're looking at is who has priority. Now, when you approach an open roundabout, anybody coming from the right has priority. So on the open roundabout, anybody who approaches you from the right hand side on the roundabout has priority. So if we draw an open roundabout, anyone if you're if you're sitting here to enter the roundabout, anybody coming from your right hand side will have priority over you. And you have to give priority to all traffic on the roundabout. And you must invariably be behind a giveaway line at that point. It could be a stop line as well invariably it will be a giveaway line. Um, the moment it becomes traffic like controlled then that's going to become a closed roundabout and you will have to adhere to what the traffic lights say. So if it's a giveaway line you would give, or give way to the right hand side of any vehicles approaching you from the right hand side. Now um, there is a degree of shielding taking place on a roundabout like this. So if we were sitting here and we wanted to enter the roundabout to go off here. We've got our left signal on because it's left in, keep left, left signal on. If we've got a whole lot of cars coming from the right who are also using this exit, then it, would, it may take a bit of time. Now, the moment, say for instance, a bus came around the roundabout. If a bus came around this roundabout, entered the roundabout, 
it was on the inside, had its right signal on, and then put its left signal on there to exit here. That bus effectively would cut off any cars that are coming around while it was exiting. And to an extent, that bus would shield us and we would be able to get onto the roundabout behind the bus's shield. We have to, when we do that, consider as well what cars are coming around behind the bus and how quickly they will come around. But if the roundabout is reasonably tight and it's two lanes, the bus coming off the roundabout at that stage would act as a shield and we'd be able to use that shield to gain entry into the roundabout. That could also be the same situation for a number of cars going off the roundabout at that stage because they'll also be blocking these cars coming onto the roundabout. So we could have a situation where shielding is going to give us priority on an open roundabout. Now, on a mini roundabout, this is one of the main things that we have to look at. So on a mini roundabout, we would look at, firstly, priority. So the first thing is always first, is always priority. And then secondly, we'd be looking at shielding. Okay, so now, let's first of all just have a look at how priority works on a mini roundabout. So on a mini roundabout, what we always have to consider, and I'm just going to, I won't fill in lines, I'm just going to, I'm not going to put in giveaway lines and boundary lines. I'm just going to simply talk about the actual positioning of the vehicles. Right, so if we are here and our intention is to go left, any cars approaching us from the right-hand side, any cars approaching us from this right-hand side will have priority over us. And we have to allow them through before we can go. Now, the question is, where would a car be going if it had its right signal on, on this roundabout? Be doing a U-turn? That's correct. It could be doing a U-turn like that. And should that's really what the right signal on that roundabout would be. And no signal, if she had no signal on, that would mean she's going straight across. Okay, so if she was using the no signal, she would be going straight across. But if she was turning right, they would put on their right signal and go right. Now, cars coming from this side, around the roundabout, like that, they would have their right signal on and would be going right. We could use them and we could go left. What we have to be extremely careful of, though, is a car coming here with its right signal could also be doing a U-turn and they would in that case have priority over us. So we must watch out for any cars that might be going beyond that point. So if a car comes here with its right signal on and it's there, then it's fine to go. But if it's there, make sure it's not intending to go around. Okay? Right, now going back to this. Now let's talk about shielding. On a roundabout, if we have a roundabout, mini roundabout, we're dealing with. There's a car on our right hand side and there's a whole stream of cars coming across from the right and they're all going across the roundabout to there and our intention was to turn right on this roundabout so we want to do that. <coughs> we want to go in this direction on the roundabout. Our problem is that this stream of cars has got priority over us. Until such time as a car comes here with its right signal on. At that stage, that car will cut that stream of cars and will shield us from that priority. So if we see this car coming, if we move, it, it moves around the roundabout. As it starts to move, we move in behind it. We can use that car as a shield to go around the roundabout. The important thing to remember is we must be sure we catch the shield early. It's pointless catching a shield once it's there because these cars will already be moving and they will be we will be obstructing them or create an accident if we catch the shield too late. So if we see the shield coming we move in behind the shield and go around especially the shield is more than one car then what will happen as we move on to the roundabout, we would cut that line of traffic and go through. 
Similar. Another good way of looking at shielding, which is which is probably the most obvious shield, is if our intention is to go straight across here, this roundabout, and there's a car coming up this road from this side, we would have to give priority. He would have priority. If this is us, this is this is us. And there's a car coming from our right hand side. We've got our no signal on to go straight across the roundabout. That car would have priority. But he would lose his priority. He would lose his priority. The moment a whole stream of cars, one or more cars, or buses or whatever, was coming to go straight across the roundabout. So we could cross over that roundabout on the left hand side while he was going across. These cars were going in that direction. That would shield us from this car. Okay, now All right, so we have a mini roundabout. We got three legs on the mini roundabout. So our intention, we're here. Our intention is to go around to the right. A car comes along and it's got its zero signal on. Its intention is to go through. So now, who has priority in, in a situation like this? Car. The car on the right. Okay, so that car has priority in a situation like this. The car on the right has priority in a situation like this. Now, he stops, however, he has to stop because there's a car here with its right signal on and it has priority over that car. So he has to stop. Now why has this car stopped? Because it's not... because of us? Yeah, correct. Because of us. This car has stopped because of us. So basically what we've got is we've got... we have to give way to him. He has to give way to that car because it's approaching him from the right. And he has to stop because this car is approaching from the right. That means nobody has priority. Now, the DSA will tell you that there are lines and other things that you can look at, and that will determine who has priority. But in, re in the real world, most drivers have got no clue who will have priority in a situation like that. And the reality of it is, the person who has priority is the person who goes first. He gets the priority because he's going on to the roundabout. But you still have to, if you're going to be the one going first, be extremely cautious, move on to the roundabout slowly. Now what happens is very interesting. If this car goes first, if we go first, and it's safe for us to go first and we keep observing, and we go first, who would then go following us, do you think? Um, that car or that car? The car to the right of us. That car? Yeah. Why would he go? He doesn't have priority over that car. Because... Of shielding. Yeah. That's exactly right. So, what would happen is, this car, if we go, that will go second, that car will go third. If this car goes first, who's going to go next? Us. Yeah, we're going to go next because we will be shielded from that car. So, on mini roundabouts, you have to consider two things, as I said originally. One is your priority, and two is your shielding. And th sometimes shielding will relieve you of your priority, and you'll be able to use the shield to go. Now, one last thing which is extremely important on these many roundabouts. Let's just do an assumption, and, and this is a typical type of thing that happens. So, in this case, we our intention is to go straight across, is to turn right. We're down here. Our intention is to approach this roundabout. Got our right signal on. We're going to be turning right into the road on our right. Now, there's a there's a whole bunch of cars coming down this road. And this mini roundabout is actually put in there for calming purposes. 
this often happens I use it to calm the traffic a bit and also to give access because if this is a major road if this road is really busy this minor road has struggles to get access onto the major road and the only way they can do that without putting in a traffic light is by putting in a mini roundabout and that really works well these mini roundabouts are brilliant for that so what happens here is our problem is that this is a major road people are coming down this road quite fast what we have to be extremely careful of, although it is our priority, because we are approaching this traffic, which is either turning left or going straight, from the right-hand side. So these cars here, we'd be approaching them from the right-hand side. We'd have priority. We have to be extremely careful of taking that priority, because what can happen to us is that this car down coming down the road might not know there's a mini roundabout, or might be ignoring it and not understand the priority and go straight through. And then we would be cut to pieces as they cut us up from the from the left hand side so what we must do is we must always in approaching and taking our priority do it in two phases we get to this line here when we get to this line here we must examine what's coming from the right make sure that we have that priority once we go on to the roundabout only then will most of these cars stop because a lot of people won't stop until you start to take your priority but your holding position is there before you move to the right so that you make sure that these cars coming down the right down the road have observed your priority before you cross that traffic that is an extremely important thing to do first of all we said that our prime rule is that if we approach the roundabout and we're going left looking at the highway code book we come in on the left hand side with our left signal in we go into the roundabout, we keep to the left, look, he's keeping to the left on the open roundabout, and then he keeps his left signal on and he exits the roundabout, obviously giving priority to any vehicles coming from the right. If we're going to the exit, which is at 12 o'clock or less, but it's not the first exit, we would go into the roundabout with no signal, because if we put on our left signal, we'd be signaling we're taking the first exit. So we'd go on to the roundabout with no signal, keep to the left-hand side, then at the exit prior to our exit. So at the point where you can't turn into that exit anymore so that you don't give the wrong information to the cars coming on to the roundabout, you would then put on, check your mirrors, make sure to check your mirrors before you put on your left signal, and then signal left and exit on the left-hand side. When you're coming onto the roundabout and you're going beyond 12 o'clock, so here we are, we're coming down this lane, we are going past the point of 12 o'clock, which is to the right. We come into the roundabout with our right signal. We hold and go into the inside lane. We keep to the inside lane. Then at the exit prior to our exit, we have already checked our mirrors. We keep checking our mirrors. We put on our left signal and we can either exit into the inside lane or we can exit into the outside lane. This will depend on what the roundabout looks like and what traffic you've got. My preference is for you to exit into the inside lane and then check your mirrors again, put on your left signal and then gain access to the left-hand lane as soon as possible thereafter. By exiting into the outside lane, you only cut the lane and you don't change lanes. By exiting into this outside lane, as opposed to the inside lane, if you exit into that lane there, you have to change lanes and exit the roundabout, which to me makes it more dangerous. So you must make sure there's no traffic on your left-hand side as you exit, obviously, onto that one. Here, you must still check your mirrors before you put your left signal and exit. And as well here, you should be checking your mirrors just to make sure there are no cyclists anybody trying to go out through there as you're exiting. So always, before you exit the roundabout, before you turn towards your junction, you must make sure you do a mirror check. So effectively, we always go onto the roundabout in the correct lane, have the correct signal on, check our mirrors before we apply our signal, and check our mirrors before we exit the roundabout. Now similarly, on the, on the mini roundabout, when you have two mini roundabouts close to each other like this where they are joined up where the junctions are staggered they tend to put in two mini roundabouts your 
point onto the roundabout. You always regard these. Don't try and do a roundabout, a mini, a double mini roundabout, by doing two roundabouts at the same time. You do your effective signalling on one roundabout at a time. So, in other words, if you were going across here to take a left there. You would go onto this roundabout with your left signal because you're taking the first exit on the roundabout. Keep your left signal on. This would be your stopping point to allow that traffic through, not there, there on the second one. And then you would go from there into your lane once that car is gone. So do one roundabout at a time if they are joined together. And your stopping point for the second roundabout is the, the defining line between the roundabouts which separates the roundabout. Sometimes that will be a giveaway line, sometimes it will just be a boundary line between the two roundabouts.